Hello friends, in this lecture we will be learning push down automata, context free languages and deterministic context free languages. Here mainly we will try to understand how to construct the push down automata. Then we will go to how to identify the context free languages along with deterministic context free languages. I hope you have understood how to identify the previously that we had a discussion on regular languages. So that will help us to identify both CFLs as well as DCFLs. Before this lecture, we have seen various topics here, how to write regular expression, how to construct the finite automata, how to identify regulars and non-regulars, what are the closure properties which are closed or not closed for regular languages and the grammars such as regular grammars and context-free grammars. We have learned how to write them and how to um, find the equivalent language for the given grammar. Now let's begin with the first topic in uh, in this lecture which is a push down automata. Okay, let me start. In this push down automata, in this push down automata, what we will learn first what is push down automata, then we have two things or two machines deterministic push down automata and push down automata so which is also called as non deterministic push down automata which can be called as push down automata also called as non deterministic push down automata which is also called as npda or you may call it as nd n or nd is your choice PDA. And then we will go for the various languages context free as well as deterministic context free where we will see all the languages which we have seen previously like regulars, finite, infinite all we will combine in this topic itself. And also we will see which are not context free languages. Now let us begin what is a push down automata? where we are exactly right now after learning the first type of languages which are regular languages. Before coming to push down automata, what we have learned is regular languages or you can say regular sets and then we are moving further to understand more languages where we are standing here to learn context of free languages. You may ask, sir, where is deterministic context free languages? If you try to understand the relation between CFLs and regulars, every regular that you take here, any regular you take here from this box or from this class, that is already a context free language. But additionally, there are some non-regulars here. They are all non-regulars. Of course, these are also non-regulars. But among so many non-regulars, some non-regulars comes under context-free languages. So what is the relation between regular language and context-free language? Here the first point, first point, every regular language is context-free language. But when you talk about a context-free language that might be here or that might be here in this box, right? So it might be inside the regular class or outside the regular class. Then what we say is context free language may or may not be regular. That means need not be regular. It depends on which context free language you have taken. Now, where the deterministic CFL lies in this class here which is really interesting for us now, here the class exists. That means every DCFL including regular, including regular, that means in the DCFL's class all the regulars are covered. Now every regular I can also say DCFL, every DCFL I can also say CFL. So already we know every regular is CFL, now the third point I am adding every DCFL before that every regular I can say that DCFL every regular is what 
DCFL. And the fourth point, every DCFL, as we know, regular is the DCFL, the every DCFL, whether it is inside the regular or outside the regular, but every DCFL is definitely CFL. Now what we cannot guarantee, if I take a CFL, that need not be DCFL, maybe outside the DCFL also. So here, you need to understand DCFL need not be CFL, may or may not be CFL. Okay, these points are very important. But I am talking about a one language, remember that? I am not talking about set of languages. In case if anybody talking about a set of languages, then you will take as a relation called a subset or superset. Now in case if you want to talk about, rather than one regular, if I want to talk about set of all regulars, this box, it's a very easy. This box is inside another box, that is, that's a DCFL class box and the yellow box is inside the outer box. Now what you can say for boxes, you can say something like this. I'm just writing another point which is one set of all regulars or all regular languages, set of all regular sets. This is one box I'm talking about. This box name is a set or a box which has many sets. That means the each dot is also looks like a one small box, but I'm not mentioning that. The, this box will have the strings, this box will have the languages, because every regular language which has the strings, right? So dots are actually correspond to one set and boxes also correspond to one set. That means a set which has a sets, like a set which has all the regular sets, right? And this set, this box is a subset is subset of course you may write subset or equal but actual proper relation is proper subset of it's not just dcfl don't write ever dcfl that's wrong set of all deterministic context free languages over the same sigma okay this is the relation we have in general you take any sigma then when you compare these two classes relation exists and not only that, the set of all DCFLs is a strictly subset of set of all CFLs, context-free languages. Of course, we have many other boxes, but we are in the pushdown automata. You should know the relation between the regulars, DCFLs and CFLs as well as their classes. When you are talking about one language, say that every regular is CFL, but CFL need not be regular. But never use the word regular is a subset of CFL is a wrong statement. Whenever you want to use regular is a subset of context free language is a wrong word. It may or may not be. But set of all regulars definitely subset of set of all DCFLs. So don't compare this language with some language from context free langu language from some language from context free language. Or you can say some language from context free languages. You don't compare because relation may exist, may not exist. First thing is very simple. When you are confusing the sentences, one simple question. Can I compare two regular languages? You may not find the relation. Even though both are regulars. Even this is regular, this is regular. But that doesn't mean that this regular is subset of other regular. You may not. Example I take, A star is a regular. B star is a regular. But any relation? No. A star is not a subset of B star, B star is not a subset of A star. Regular and regular, when there is no relation, then how regular and CFL may have a relation, right? They may have, but how regular and CFL will have a relation? That you should question, do not just say that regular is subset of CFL, because that statement is completely wrong. You should, if you want to say that, you should know what regular and what CFL you are talking about like this, then I can say, yes, this regular and that regular will not have a relation, will not have a relation with the subset or superset. That way we can talk about. Fine. So I hope you got my point. When to use the subset word and when to use this is very important. Okay. Then we will start. What is a push down automata now? Okay. What is push down automata? You have learned what is finite automata. Then let me come from there. 
you know about NFA. Why I'm going for NFA? Because this push down automata is by default a non deterministic. What is it? By default, it is non deterministic. It is non deterministic by default. So, whatever it accepts, that is context free language. And this language is also called as non deterministic context free language. You can call the CFL with another name which is called as non deterministic context free language. So, I am not writing here, but this CFL is also called as non deterministic CFL because we have other name, a different name for other language which is DCFL, deterministic CFL is different from CFL even though they have a relation but we will talk about that. What is the definition of NFA? If you give any string W, suppose this NFA accepts language L, then what happens? In case W accepted by this machine, then this NFA has at least one path that holds at final, right? So, how it says that if W belongs to L, this NFA, it has at least one path that holds at final, that holds it, sorry, that holds it final state because if you want to go for acceptance you have to use the final state word because non final will not correspond right so now if there's any string you give to the nfa in case if that is a valid string you will definitely find some path i am not saying every path because there may be many paths in the machine but at least one path will halt at final that's guaranteed if the string is invalid definitely this will not happen other than this anything can happen path may exist may not exist if exist definitely it will alter non-final so this is what the nfa definition now when it comes to pda yes it's one of the important uh, point this nfa or finite automata has the only one mechanism called as final state mechanism whereas pda has three mechanisms among them two are very very important like the acceptance mechanisms in PDA are three types, but we will learn you initially final state, later on we will go for other things. Acceptance mechanisms. PDA acceptance mechanisms. One is PDA can accept a string using final state. like finite automata. The second one using empty stack. Why empty stack? This PDA is also having a stack. Third using you can also use the both properties final state and empty stack together to decide acceptance of a string both a final state and empty stack. Then you should have a question, sir, what is this empty stack or stack? And that's what we are going to learn. And before that, let me help you. The PDA can be designed three ways. One, you may use a final state or empty stack or could be both. Right. So all the three mechanisms are equivalent. If you have one technique, then you can convert to other. That means all the three are equivalent. You can follow any one of them. We follow final state mechanism to understand what is PDA. As you should know, what is PDA first? Once you know the final state, then later on you can work on empty stack. Okay? That may be your own work, but I will help you with the final state mechanism. And you should know how to accept your string using empty stack. We will see some of the languages, but you should know how to accept the string using empty stack mechanism for various context free languages. Okay, let me come to the point how PDA can be designed. Like a finite automata, the configuration is 
we have input tape similar to the finite automata no doubt and we have the symbols to read from the input tape you may have the symbols like this and you have the head call it as read head or read pointer we have similarly finite control like finite automata you should have finite number of states along with this this is the finite automata right it moves only one direction that's left to right the head moves only one direction to read the symbols on the tape now along with this it's called as finite automata configuration along with this we additionally have a stack what is this called as a stack unbounded stack no limit how many symbols you push onto the stack it's unbounded stack so you can push on uh, symbols onto the stack or you can pop from the stack so it's your choice you want to push or pop or you do want to use it or not you decide it because you have the flexibility to use this stack what operations you perform basically push or pop don't do anything so three kinds of uh, situations you will face while you are using the stack now together all this we call it as a push down automata configuration you will be having a stack to remember the symbols whenever you require and you have the states to move from one to other and you have head to read the symbols from the tape to take the actions or to take to change the states if required okay all these things are needed for the push down automata push down automata now i told the push down automata is also called as non deterministic push down automata if it is non deterministic push down automata then what is the definition of pda you know the nfa right but pda if it is accepting using final state by default we always use a final state in case anybody mentions separately like empty stack then you should follow them here we have a string let's say w which is called as a string input string let's say this pda is accepting language l then if the string belongs to l what happens in this pda like nfa it will definitely holds at final with at least one path at least one path exists in the machine no doubt at least one path holds at final state at least one path exists that holds at a final state so this is the same definition that we have in nfa but where is the change when it comes to configuration already we have seen much change like when it is finite automata how many parameters we have q sigma delta q not f of course we have two things one is the dfa another one is nfa nfa with epsilon without epsilon and in dfa we have domain is cartesian product of uh, set of states and uh, input alphabet the codomain is the set of states here q cross sigma if you have epsilons then include epsilons then codomain is the power set of q that was about finite automata whereas in push down automata in push down automata you will be having seven parameters among this all of them you have um, uh, including them including them you have additionally two what are they so let me talk about them too so i hope you can remember them easily let me add one more here push down automata has total seven parameters one is the q sigma delta q not f additionally as you know the finite automata plus one stack which looks like the equivalent to pd right here dfa nfa both are equivalent so finite automata plus additionally one stack you may consider nfa if you want to talk about pda that's fine but this is the behavior of the push down automata how it looks like additionally what do you require the stack what stack basically includes 
a special symbol we may use Z naught. That's called as bottom of the stack or initially top of the stack. Both are same. So, <coughs> sorry, this Z naught has many names. Like either you may use Z naught to represent bottom of the stack or initially top of the stack symbol, right? Initial top of the stack symbol. Fine. There is another way you can represent that's a bottom symbol. You can also use this if you want it. Or in some questions, they may use any symbol, not specific Z0 and this bottom symbol, but you may use any symbol when I define or denote it. So it's all depends on your question that is it Z0 or X or Y or Z, whatever it is. So read the question carefully. Do they have any bottom of the stack symbol? If they have, what symbol they are using it? You must read the question properly. Anyhow, so I'm mentioning Z0, but this might change from question to question, whether it is bottom of the stack or not. Or did they use some other symbol for to represent bottom of the stack? Additionally, apart from this, there is another alphabet called as the gamma, which is basically represent stack alphabet. As you know, we have input alphabet, but that is to read the input symbols from the tape. But in th this stack is different from tape. Tape, what you are reading that is given to you and this internal to the push down automata, you have the stack to understand or to remember something. So on this stack, you decide what you want to push. No restriction, do you want to push A or B, X or Y, you decide what symbols you want to use, but declare it. The stack alphabet, suppose I am pushing A symbols onto it, only A I am pushing, then the stack alphabet will be including Z0 as well as A. If I push B also, then I will have A comma B along with the Z0. So this is how you def define the stack alphabet. So it's all your implementation details. The same problem, you design the PDA with A comma Z0, the same problem I may design using Z0 comma X. So I can change my stack alphabet to represent or to understand the given language. Okay, so we will be seeing that. But understand, there is a stack which is used internally to represent your given language. The stack is completely internal, but what you can't change? The sigma is given to you, so you must follow that. But what is not given? Stack alphabet that you can decide if nothing restricted. What you want to use on the stack, you can decide on your own. Fine, now you have a gamma. Now you can see the two new things remaining all you know right, this is a set of states, finite number of states you know that in finite automata already and sigma is input alphabet, set of stacks, set of input symbols, this is the transition function which is different from, different uh, for PDA as well as DPDA. It's a transition function. We will see that Q0 is a start state also called as initial state, which is compulsory for every automata and F is the set of final states. The other two parameters already defined here, right? The gamma and Z0. So this is how the PDA configured with the seven parameters. Now, this delta transition function is uh, different for both deterministic as well as non-deterministic. Let me help you that too. <coughs> when we call PDA, it is also called as what? NPDA or non-deterministic PDA. But there is another machine which is called as deterministic pushdown automata. So we have two machines. One is deterministic, another one is PDA. So people might say that PDA is two types, deterministic, non-deterministic. No, actually PDA is a non-deterministic. When you restrict it, you will get a deterministic. In finite term, you may say you have two types, DFA and NFA, so both are equivalent. But in PDA, we don't say two types. When you restrict the PDA, you will get a DPDA. When you restrict the PDA, you will get a DPDA. In PDA, we have uh, the transition function, especially 
for this PDA, what we have here? Delta is Q cross sigma cross gamma. Here, you can see, if you don't want to read input symbol, you can take epsilon. And if you don't want to look at the top of the stack, you can also take epsilon here. So just I'm writing gamma star, but it could be gamma union epsilon or gamma star, which is very popular. 2 power q cross gamma star. And don't worry about this star is not required or if, if you want, you can keep it. It depends on your choices. But you see that you got a non-deterministic in nature because of this 2 power q cross gamma star. Whereas in NFA, you have only 2 power q. If I delete these two gamma stars, definitely you will see NFA definition because additionally stack is there. So we are looking at the stack and we are doing something on this stack. When it is DPDA, deterministic pushdown automata, the delta was so easy, Q and you always read something, especially in some situations at the end of the input and you will have Q cross gamma star. So what is this five, uh, you know, five parameters here in the domain we have three and co-domain we have two. What is the meaning of this? So in DPDA, you can understand very easily compared to PDA, but PDA can be designed very easily compared to DPDA. So look at what is happening. If DPDA is, uh, if DPDA is given, very easy to understand. When you want to construct, you can approach a PDA very easily. So approaching the PDA is very easily and understanding DPDA is very easy. So somehow like a DFA NFA comparison. You want to design DFA, DFA very uh, looks difficult for some problems. But if you want to design NFA, it looks so easy sometimes, right? So that's a very important compared to deterministic and non-deterministic in nature. Deterministic means you need to worry every situation without missing it. But in non-deterministic, worry about what you want. Example, you want to prepare for gate, then worry about the gate and do it. That's called as non-deterministic. But deterministic is not that. If I prepare for the gate, what happens? If I prepare for the GRU, what happens? Every situation you have to put into the picture, then you need to consider all of them. Prepare everything, know, your, your, know about the your possible results. That's really very complicated, right? So that's why we always follow non-deterministic natures, correct? Now what is this meaning? What is this component uh, represent basically? Q we use to understand present state. Where are we right now? Sigma will talk about, of course you know set of states, but the present state we are going to write. And Sigma will talk about what you are reading presently. Current input symbol, you can say that. What is present input symbol that you are reading from the set? And the gamma is going to help us what you are looking on the stack, the top of the stack symbol basically. What is there in the stack? Top of stack. What are you looking at? Top of stack symbol. I'll simply say top of stack. What is there? And this Q represent what is the next state that I want to move? What is this is called as what sequence you are going to do that will help us what operation you want to perform that i am looking at something i am going to put some sequence will help us what operation you are going to do so this is going to help you what operation you want to do of course not an operation but when you see that sequence you will get to know am i doing push or pop or no operation so here there are three things which will help you push or pop are nothing that can be decided by just looking at this gamma star position let me help you one thing for the DPDA look at this suppose somebody has written from capital A by reading 1 by looking at top of the stack 0 I want to do something like going to B and I just want to write 0, 0, 0. 
really what happened here correct so when you look at this you must learn each and every parameter to understand what is push down automata in case if you are blindly remembering the motions you know it's very challenging how you can um, interpret this statement so now when you know the definition doesn't matter how somebody designed you can approach the definition you can get the answer from it so now i'm trying to get the answer from it somebody designed a uh, motion using this transition they want to go from a to b by reading input 1 by looking at the top of the stack 0 but they did something i want to know what they did something right what they did here look at here what they did it's a very simple situation that we have what is a state a present state what is the next state b so they want to move from a to b it's a very clear for us now they want to move from a to b but what did they read they have read one and they looked at the top of the stack zero so they are looking at they are reading input and this is the top of the stack and they did something here what they did is it's a gamma star that's a sequence of stack symbols here the zero already there and above that they kept two zeros so this zero is same additionally they have kept two zeros it means they performed zero to triple zero zero to triple zero it means they did two symbols pushed push to consecutive zeros onto the stack that's why you got three zeros so this is the theoretical representation of the transition right now let's look at how do we represent from you know one comma zero you got triple zero right so one is the input and zero is the top of the stack and you got triple zero so you can write something like one is input but what you are looking at is zero but what did you get is triple zero it means that you are reading something you are looking at something on the stack and you did something some operation on the stack so these three things are very important you can write many ways like one comma zero goes to triple zero or you may say one comma zero comma triple zero but you should know what sequence you are looking at because already definition is very clear there are three things apart from present and next already present next is here other three parameters how do you look at in the sequence first is sigma then gamma gamma star so sigma gamma gamma star we may write slash arrow or comma that is going to be equivalent in terms of while uh, designing the motion okay i hope you got a clear uh, pick what i am trying to explain here the how you represent these three parameters is does not matter but order is matter like one zero triple zero you may write a comma slash you may write a comma comma or comma arrow that you decide okay this is what called as push operation i told there are various operations push pop do nothing if you want to perform the pop what you do basically here put epsilon means this was zero and there is no symbol it means that zero was deleted so if you put only one zero instead of three zeros then that's called as a uh, no operation if you keep one zero here zero is here here zero that means you did nothing on the stack so you decide this is the stack and here you have zero and after doing something here after doing something that's i'm um, moving from one state to other state or maybe in the same state sometimes above zero if you see two more zeros then that's called as you are trying to push two zeros but what is below we don't worry it something is there on the stack something is there on the stack right you might be in the state a you might be going to the state b then how you represent this situation many ways like from a you might be reading let's say you might be reading in the tape let's say you are reading one let's say that's the current input symbol you're reading one and you are looking at zero you are going to the next state b and you put three zeros that's properly push double zero but no need to be like this no need to be like this you can also do one more way like a one don't look at here zero you are looking at it sometimes i don't want to look at i just want to push it double zero that is also possible but this is very powerful it will also push if it is one here so, so be careful i am representing another way 
but this is having other things to do not only when the top of the stack is zero so you should know whether it is top of the stack is zero or anybody if it is anybody no need to write for zero for one separately you can just put epsilon anybody just do push double zero b comma zero zero so it's going to push double zero without looking at top of the stack this epsilon means I am not looking at the top of the stack. I mean, somebody is there. I don't care. So I am just assuming that nobody is there. Epsilon means nobody there here. But I am pushing the two symbols. So how you understand this? Here somebody is there. Here nobody is there. And after some time, you got here two zeros. Obviously, this is almost same when you don't consider this zero. So I don't have anybody here. Now I am going to push double zero here. That's all the difference. But both are going to do the same job if you want to do for this and is there any other way yes a comma one comma okay somebody is there here i don't worry what is that so let me write something like uh, x this all the all complete thing is x like i said this is a stack you have somebody here now after some time above this x i want to push double zero then you can write as b comma 0 0 x there are various ways to perform the push operation that's why when it comes to push down automata it's challenging for us to understand the representation itself when you understand the representations then designing or understanding the motions will become so easy for us okay now i hope you understood how to do the push operation but when to do that language will decide we don't decide right now because i did not given any language i was talking about how to utilize the stack i'm not talking about the language right now it is only one situation somebody want to push two zeros when the top of the stack is zero then use this when somebody want to push two zeros without looking at the stack then take this when somebody want to push two zeros without looking at the top of the stack these two are going to do the same job whether you don't look at or look at but something is there but what is that you don't know what is it right something is there or something might be nothing in this case so anyhow these two are going to perform same but this one will restrict top of the stack so this specially comes under deterministic trans this basically comes under dpda transitions but all the three comes under push down automata and you know every dpda is a pda so all the three you can use in a pda but this one especially used in deterministic push down automata but these two cannot be used in deterministic because as you know in deterministic push down automata here it's gamma is there not a gamma star so you must look at somebody if you don't look at that's not deterministic okay here you can't take more than one in deterministic push down automata more than one symbol you can't look at so but there's a sequence of stack symbols it's again uh, non-deterministic so all the three comes under non-deterministic but if you want to consider dpda you must follow this kind of nature while while taking the transitions so all are comes under pda transitions all the three but this one only comes under dpda not remaining or not okay so now similarly you can do pop or you can do no operation pop in the sense here zero will be there here epsilon will be there or uh, what, how, how do we pop definitely this top of the stack should be there otherwise you can't pop so this must be there to pop if epsilon is there you can't pop because you don't know what is the top of the stack this cannot be used and x also cannot be used but along with x you can use the top of the stack let me help you that too if anybody want so let me help you pop operations You are reading one, but you want to pop zero, right? You want to pop zero. How do you pop? Go to the same or different state depends on your requirement. Epsilon. That means here zero is there, and here zero is not there. That means somebody deleted. There is a pop zero. Second, you have a comma one comma zero x. Now you have left with only x. Then here, what happened here to here? that zero is deleted right you are just popping zero 
these are the two ways but don't write epsilon here if you don't look at the top of the stack you will never pop it among these two which one is used in deterministic the first one is only used in deterministic second one is not used in uh, deterministic but sorry first one is used only in dpda it only word is difficult here okay only this transition is used in dpda but both the transitions are used in npd both the transitions are used in npd every dpda when you design a machine that's also called as pda but when you design a pda you may or may not use this one if you use it that pda may not be dpda so when you are performing pda transitions carefully look at are you designing dpda or not if you are really designing dpda then uh, it's very easy to you know uh, follow this first notation okay what about the previous one this is a pda push operations if you want a push operation then use this any of this three for pda for dpda use the first one similarly no operation is very simple what is a no operation if you want to do nothing on the stack no operation that's also called as nothing you may say no operation on stack for pda you can use many ways one suppose you have already let's say zero only then what do you say keep zero means no change happened here you can see that nothing happened it's called as no push no pop it's simply no operation neither push nor pop second epsilon but you should know really is that epsilon needed for all the time like when the top of the stack zero or one it's going to do this situation is going to do the same right but this one when the top of the stack zero then only uh, skip one or read one and change the state right is a more restricted form you know exactly what is there on the stack what you are doing but this one doesn't matter what is there on the stack i am going to read one and i am going to change the b so you decide which one is needed for according to your requirement or according to the language you need to decide because some languages might demand this one right three in case you want to consider something but i don't know what is it but i am saying that something is there and the same thing will be there then it's again same like two so all the three will correspond to the same meaning a similar meaning you can say that from state a you are moving to state b in all of them and you are reading one all the time in all the three transitions here you are popping zero by looking at zero two statements i'm using by uh, i'm popping zero by looking at zero here oh i'm sorry that's for pop here i'm not popping anything right transition okay nothing happened here but what happened nothing happened but by looking at zero that's very important right that i'm was talking about pop operation but this is not a pop i am doing nothing but by looking at zero here i am doing nothing but without looking anything on the stack here i am doing nothing but i am looking at whole stack i don't know what symbol on the top of the stack but i am looking at something old stack okay so again same same epsilon epsilon means nothing happened xx means nothing happened zero zero means nothing happened okay so keep that in mind this is no operation but by looking at something by looking at nothing by looking at whole thing right <laughs> something nothing whole thing so these things are very important here now i hope with this you got to know how to perform the operations on the stack but you know i told there are uh, two things push down automata and deterministic push down automata what is the power of this machines basically dpd is less powerful than push down automata why i'm not talking about one language in the uh, class it's about the whole class like when we are talking about dpda you can represent only few only few means not 1 2 3 it's infinite only but this number of languages represented by this pda will be smaller than or subset than the number of languages that you express the pda like you know that when we have 
the set of DCFLs. You have so many DCFLs here, right? So many, including regulars, finite languages, all. This set is CFLs, set of CFLs. If you look at this, if I use the DPDA, I can only represent this many languages, right? If anybody want to, I can use DPD, but PDA I can use for all, including DCFL. That means who is having more express expressive power, who can represent more languages, push down automata. So we say that PDA is more expressive, so more powerful, DPD is less powerful. If you really want to compare with the finite automata, I can use finite automata here. But don't use DFA and NFA because the finite automata, DFA and NFA all are equivalent. So here I can't say DFA and NFA who is uh, different power because they are all equivalent power. So here I can use FIFA, DFA, NFA all are equivalent. Because we know this finite automata is equivalent to NFA, DFA too. Okay, all are equivalent here. So I can use now the finite automata is less powerful than DPDA, DPDA is less powerful than PDA. So this when you compare with the finite automata, but right now I am just leaving to you how to compare. When you compare this two, DPDA is less powerful than PDA, PDA is more powerful than DPDA. The reason is here, P by using PDA you can represent more languages, that's the whole class is set of all CFLs, right? The class name is set of all CFLs and using DPDA you can only represent this many languages. Of course this is also infinite and other class is also infinite, but this a number of languages is uh, less than the number of languages instead of CFLs, fine. That's why we have uh, less powerful, DPDA is less powerful than PDA. When we call uh, a DPDA, it means deterministic pushdown automata, it's more stricter than what you design PDA. Here first point you should remember, every DPDA, definitely PDA without any doubt. Every DPDA is pushed down automata. Just on any DPDA, it definitely called as a PDA. Only the problem is when you design a PDA, it may not look like a DPDA. Even though it represents DCFL, it may not look like a DPDA. So PDA need not be DPDA. So it's a very important point for you. Every DPDA is a PDA, but PDA need not be DPDA. It may look like DPDA sometimes, it may not look like DPDA. As you see, the push pop no operation has a different uh, ways to represent that makes what PDA today, right? So PDA is uh, having more options to design, but DPDA has less options to design. It's a deterministic in nature, you have to represent everything clearly. So if the string is valid, if the string is uh, valid, so definitely you can represent, you have to represent, right, exactly one part that Hall said final in the deterministic. But when it is non-deterministic, you have more choices to represent. Again, here while designing, you will learn a lot. With this, you have learned what is pushed down automatically, that's it. That means if you really want to understand what is context-free language, what is deterministic CFL, you should start designing PDA and DPDA, we will get to know what is CFL and DCFL. How the stack is going to help us to understand some behavior in the problem, like dependency issues. I want to compare A's and B's, how this stack is going to help us. We're going to learn with the help of construction. At this time, we are in a position to know what is PDA. Now using this, we are going to start constructing push down automata, right? To construct it, I just want to tell you the various problems we are going to do. Among them, the one problem that we face the first time is n, let's say, greater than or equal to 1. Very simple to understand the language. Of course, I will construct it, but before that, there are many things you should know about the language, right? Many, many things we are going to talk about here rather than designing PDA, okay? The pre-requirements I can say. Here, what symbols you are want to compare? If you don't want to compare, you can manage with the states, right? Like a finite automata. But you here, you know that 
minimum string is a b then two a's two b's then so on. Now look at you take any string like this what you want to do with this string if you want to compare a's and b's which should be equal <coughs> what should be your logic. So here you need to focus a lot like on what symbols how to use the stack we want to push or pop and what symbols you want to push what symbols you want to read right. So all the things you have to follow according to your logic your logic my logic may not be same based on how you push and pop operations like by looking at one a I might be pushing two symbols by looking at one a you might be pushing one symbol uh, by looking at one a I might be doing a lot of symbols to push it is all depends on your logic right. But there are many logics for the same problem so this language you assume that there are infinite equivalent D PDAs like we know like we know in regular language in regular languages for one regular you can design infinite DFS. But minimum DFA might be one minimum DFA is unique you know it but here there is no such concept of minimum uh, unique unique right you can't see unique PDA as there is no meaning to number of states here. <coughs> now for this what should be the logic what should be the logic there are so many logics as I said equal number of A's and B's where A's followed by B's. Now when we are reading this sequence who comes first A's or B's it is going to be very important for you. If A comes first that means you need to keep representative for A that means if A comes either I may push A or B I do not care but I know A comes when I read A I push somebody but I know what I am doing again I am saying when I am reading A's I can do anything on the stack I can push any symbol on the stack but I know representative for A. So every A I push one A or every A I push one B but I decide in my problem I know what I push. So same thing I will pop. So that is what you require to understand in one machine what I do every A I push one A other machine every A I push one B but both will conclude the same answer at the end for the same language the same language is going to accept. So right now there are many logics to understand. So here A's comes first what they come this A's are going to appear first. Why we need to understand who is first and second because we always go left to right and who comes next which is dependency which is having dependency this is going to appear second. Now you tell me how to utilize the stack now I have a stack now I have six symbols let us say three A's three B's now first I am reading A this is input you know it it is a stack assume initially Z0 is there do not worry I am not designing a PDA I am trying to help you how you should think about this context free languages you should know that how to utilize the stack only the one issue that we may face you might assume the one answer for one language but never be it is infinite PDAs are there for the same language believe me that. So then you will focus on how you design this machine or what is the uh, logic for this what is the logic for this problem you will focus lot. Now for this one A my question is should I push A or should I push B should I push, push C should I push D should I push a dollar should I push at the rate you decide all are equivalent but throughout my logic I will maintain the consistency and same ok. So now for every A I push one A that means this A what I am going to do I am going to take a decision push A and not only this I am pushing it but I read A and the same thing when I am reading this I do the same thing again when I am reading this I am also doing the same but when B comes I am going to take a decision that I am going to pop A so I am going to pop when the next B comes 
why are you popping A? Why not B? Because when I push A, I can only pop A. When I push A, how can I pop B? The input symbols might change, but the stack, the same symbols are helping to compare both A's and B's. You might be writing A power N, B power N, but internally happening A power N, A power N. You push this and the same number of symbols you pop it. The same symbol is representative to compare both A and B. This is what happening in PDA. When you read A's, you push A's. When you read B's, you pop A's. So this is what happening inside the stack. But these are different operations. So that's why you are able to compare two different symbols. Perfect. Now the second symbol is popped. When this B comes, you pop another A. And when the end of the string comes, when there is nobody left, when nobody left, then Z0 on the top of the stack. So there you will go to final. There you will go to final. Maybe use uh, some special end of the input dollar at the rate somebody, but you know that it's the end of the input like finite meta. We never keep end of the input, right? But still, when you halt in final, you will get to know that's the end of the input because there's nothing left in the input. So you can decide you are halting at right state. But now you understand when the end of the input occurs, who should be the top of the stack? Judd not. That means the given string is valid. Given string is valid. So this is how you design pushdown automata. And what you want, I want this string. I don't want other strings. When more A's, less B's. I don't have the configuration. Something will happen, but we'll never reach final. Uh, we will reach the final only when equal number of A's and B's. Remaining all the situations we don't consider, that means we'll not go to the final. Okay? Now, this is the one scenario. Is this only the one scenario you have? No, right? Let me help you another way. Suppose I have uh, three A's, three B's. Now, initially, the stack has Z0. Now, the first A, push. But this time, I push B. That means, for this symbol, I can also push B. For this symbol also, I can push B. All the symbols, all the A's, I can push B's. That I can decide. When the B comes, previously I was popping A, but now I will pop B. I know what I am doing. This is my logic, right? I can push B. But at the end of the day, I am comparing A's and B's. But for the first A's, I will push B's. And next remaining B's, I will pop the same number of B's. I'll push this many B's. I'll pop the same number of B's to understand the logic between this A's and B's. Because logic is number of A's equal to number of B's. Sometimes number of A's less than number of B's, the logic will change, not the same logic. But you will be having the similar kind of comparison. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, the designing the PDA. I hope you got an approach to design the PDA. But I did not design the PDA yet. I want you to give the logic or idea how we approach the designing a PDA. Right? Without having this proper consideration of the string. Now PDA designing might end up with wrong states and transitions. The, the sequence of transitions that you design in the PDA must match your logic to accept the valid strings. Okay. Now, let me start. The first problem that we have, obviously the same problem. So, you should not face much difficulty in designing the machine. Right. I am using a final state mechanism. I am following a DPD initially, but you can assume it is a PDA. As you know, every DPD is a PDA. Let me design that. First, you know the uh, language, right? The language is having the a, b, a square, b square, a cube, b cube, and so on. Right. So this is what I am going to do. If the string is valid, if the string is valid, if the string is valid, then definitely you will have exactly one transition. If the string is invalid, if the string is invalid, I'll keep either 0 or 1 or more depends on my requirement. But exactly one transition that goes to final when the string is valid. So I'm going to design deterministic machine. So I'll try to ensure every valid string will have exactly one path. Every invalid string, I will not have a path in case if I want to design that way. So this is the one confusion, the one uh, when it comes to DFA to uh, DPDA, in DFA everything is exactly one. 
like valid string invalid string i will have exactly one path that goes to uh, final if it is valid that goes to infal uh, that goes to non final if it is invalid when it comes to dpda dpda we talk about valid we talk about valid string if the string is valid i'll keep exactly one path that holds at final if the string is invalid i will not keep the path because i'll design that way that no path you can convert to one path if you want it so this is a one way you can say it's indirectly you can say any string that you take in the language you will have at most one path at most one path either no path or one path that is how we designed anyhow don't worry much about it we'll design it you will get to know and now as i told first take a string understand how to design a machine and for deterministic in nature as i'm going to design first deterministic push down automata of course when i design a dpda it is definitely pda it's definitely pda so i'm designing dpda but i'm saying it is a pda and there are many kinds of uh, pdas that you can design you may design dpda or which may, may be not dpda first there is a one assumption that makes easy for us i'll just keep end of the input as a dollar is a very special input that we keep especially for deterministic machines otherwise you have to read epsilon at the end even it is deterministic machine okay fine many ways again now what is approach approach is very simple for a what we do you are going to push a for all the symbols i do the same approach i do the same approach from here to here okay for all of them but from here we are going to copy from here to till the b but when dollar comes you will you should not have any symbol on the stack that's already we know the logic right now i want to build the machine so i'm just writing again don't worry about it now let me start it the same approach i'm going to do but each time you need to put the same effort now this time i'm going to put much effort to design a pd or dpd see the effort that i'm going to do you tell me what's happening here initially z not is there if not there you have to put you have to push onto the stack okay that you can take additionally one transition from the initial state so my assumption is z not is there initially on the top of the stack now look at both you have to look at right z not and e so a is a input and z not is the top of the stack i'm just writing the transitions but we will focus on the machines machine assume right now you are at initial state q not what is your target that push all the a's by staying in the same state i will be staying here only but i want to push every a i want to push every a onto the stack how see from q not i'm reading a but i'm looking at z not what i want to do i want to perform the push i want to stay in the same state but how do you perform the push should i write a z not or should i write double a see z not already there so i keep z not but above that i want to push a so you have to keep a here that means this transition sorry this configuration will become this one so after reading one a that this stack will appear that means when you are reading an input you must remember at every stage what is your stack in case you missed what is there in the stack you are reading this symbol you don't understand what happening next so you must remember what is my remaining stack symbols when i am reading a particular symbol in the input that's what is your logic it's going to decide your logic okay so right now i am reading a at this time my stack has only a followed by z not it has to be in your brain or mind to understand what should be next okay will it help the next a see that this time a is the input but z not is not on the top of the stack that means this transition is going to help you only for the first a and that means i'm going to write a comma g not is a g not a z not okay 
but this transition will not help you for any other right now look at that the problem is here in dfa nfa when you write a you can read any number of a's you can read all this but that's not going to happen here because this transition will not help for the next input only that means putting the self loop is not going to read many a's it's very very different this a's in dfa nfa can read any number of a's from the tape but this a comma z not is going to happen only when the input is a top of the stack is z not otherwise no okay so the look at the difference this is any number of a's but it is not it is depends on the input and the top of the stack combination if a comma z not happens then only this will take even though i am putting the self loop that doesn't mean that it's going to read again and again for a's but it is going to read again and again whenever a comma z not happens whenever a comma but next time a comma a happening that means this is only for the first a not for the remaining a's as i told in dfa nfa when i keep this a first a second a third three a's i can read from here only okay that's the first important point next from q not a is input and top of the stack is a only but this time i am going to write a a why we have a 1a and we are putting 2a's that means i want to push this input whatever i read onto the stack now 1a is going to come and next this transition the second transition i can write one more edge here or i can write here you decide put one more self loop or you can write delete self because both are two different transitions i can give for the same edge a comma a slash w now the my question is whenever you see this two transition who comes first who comes next that decided based on the combination don't assume yourself this a comma z not comes first this a comma a comes next no that no such things only based on the combination that you see while reading a comma z not may happen any time it need not be for, it not only first time it could happen in the future depends on your problem right for this problem it it's happening a comma z not first but other problems a comma z not may happen even at the end well depends on your problem okay so but the meaning of this one is from this state whenever input is a whenever input is a but top of the stack is z not this will happen and top of the stack is a this will happen so instead of taking two different edges you can also take this into single edge like this a comma a slash a a of course you can write any order doesn't matter okay that's happened now the third a is also pushing one more a the same transition the same transition combination will help us right next when the b comes now the situation these two transitions will not help because these two transitions when we reading when we are reading a but when we are reading b you should take one more different transition but this time we are going to change the state to start the pop operation so far what we are doing you are doing push operations so i got to know there are three symbols which are representative for these three symbols okay i told if you are reading three a's you can push three a's or you can push three b's or you can push three symbols on your choice but you should know what to pop when you are reading b the first b you are going to pop a but how you do that you need to write one more transition for that from q not when you are reading b top of the stack is a you are going to start the pop here the starting the pop operation starting the pop operation so i'm going to change the state to q1 why i can't be in the same state because after b one more a comes it will push but we know the input is that after a b should come after b a will not come so to guarantee that we are changing the state that's it what do you want to do here q1 comma pop pop means epsilon okay one a is deleted so here input is b top of the stack is a you just pop it that means this a is deleted a is deleted and after this after this every b you do the same but this will not help because you are not in q not you are in q1 now 
first b you come here but remaining all the ways put a self loop that's every b pop 1a every b when the top of the stack is a pop 1a for this b pop this a for this b you pop 1a for that the same transition is going to help us from q1 now onwards there is no q naught right q1 b comma a you do the same but stay in the same state now at this point of time when you reach the dollar end of the input what is there on the top of the stack z naught so this combination is going to help you your z naught your dollar so input is dollar or end of the input you can use epsilon you can use dollar or decide on your own end of the input this dollar or epsilon you can use any of this dollar or epsilon what should be the on top of the stack z naught what should be dollar here dollar comma z naught now what do you want to perform if it is deterministic uh, uh, pitch down automata you should say something either keep the z naught or popping is not required if it is deterministic machine if it is pushed down automata do anything you push pop doesn't matter because after this we are going to final state here there is no outgoing trans edges here here you can do any operation push pop anything that's fine so most of the books you see here z naught or some books you see epsilon that doesn't matter right anyhow you are going to be final state from here you don't see any input as already input end of the input occurred so you are going to halt at any cost here so what you perform here push up up doesn't matter okay anyhow the stack is used as after this after halting at final so this is how the machine is going to be designed clear but when the string is valid you will definitely have one path that halts at final when the string is invalid you may not have a path here that's fine zero path is allowed in deterministic and non deterministic machines as per the push down automata definition okay so in deterministic push down automata if the string is invalid zero path also fine but if you have the path skip one path that's fine okay that's the main difference between dfa and dpda in dfa you should have exactly one path but in dpda you keep either 0 or 1 because already designing the machine is very difficult for us so covering every combination from every state like q cross sigma cross gamma t parameters you need to do the cartesian product so many combinations comes out from every state so we ignore that point but it's guaranteed if it is a deterministic machine a comma z naught from this state you will have only one transition a comma a only one transition b comma a only one transition but anything which is missing dollar comma a is missing dollar comma z not missing that means assume you are going to dead state and staying there okay that would be fine for deterministic machines okay this is one machine but is this always necessary to design this way as it is deterministic machine so i did this way but as i told infinite equivalent uh, machines are the pds are there to understand or to accept the same language okay so let me try another one now you understood the logic you understood the machine but this is called as deterministic a machine it is dpda so also called as a pda no doubt okay definitely pda also but it's not necessary to design uh, dpda you can also design a pda for this of course in fact you can design turing machine for this because it's going to be satisfied or accepted by all the machines that you see in future too they are very powerful than this now i'm going to design another pda or you may say if you want to design dpda there are many i told already every a every a you can also push b's every b you can pop b's that's another logic that you do as a homework if you want to do like i, I was pushing a's i was popping a's right i was pushing a's i was popping a's now what you do is another one you push b's and pop b's right but every a you push b every b you pop b that is how you can do and at the end dollar comma z naught is your acceptance condition here another logic this is a logic one you can say logic one what is this logic one i just designed a dpda here now i don't want dpda i know uh, 
PDA is more powerful, right? PDA even can understand DPDAs without having deterministic nature. Now I want to design non-deterministic in nature, but that is not a deterministic. The machine should not look like this, but should accept the same language. Yes, it's possible. Like what is your logic here? What is your logic here? You want to have equal number of A's and B's? You want to have equal A's and B's? See this, every A, you want to push A. Why do you want two different transitions? I know already Z0 is there in the beginning. I know A's will come next. Really, B's never comes on the stack because I only push A's. So there is easiest way to do that. What is that way? Q0, see this. One transition is enough. A, epsilon, A, that would be sufficient but it is a non-deterministic nature, right? Even though it is accepting deterministic context free language, but the machine is not DPD, okay? So very important. This kind of transition never happens in what? DPDA. Even though it is pushing A's, but using non-deterministic nature. Here, by looking at the Z0, by looking at A you are pushing, here I don't look at, I know Z0 only there, I push A. And whoever comes next, I push A, I don't look at it all, right? Because I never push B in my logic here, okay? In case I want to push B from the beginning, I could have taken the decision that A comma epsilon slash B. So in my logic, I push A's for A's, I pop A's for B's. Now this will take care of pushing A's, whether the top of the stack is Z0 or whether the or top of the stack is A, it will take care. And we know top of the stack B never comes because we never pushed it. But after that, B comma A, this will take the decision like whenever B started, the first B, A should be on the stack. So we pop it. After that, every B, I pop A. And when the end of the input comes, definitely, so I may take epsilon or dollar, dollar I don't need for non-deterministic motions, it's okay, epsilon. And when the Z0 comes, do whatever and go to final. Now, definitely this is not a deterministic PDA. It's definitely not a deterministic PDA. At any cost, you can say it is uh, NPDA. Of course, this is also NPDA, you may say it if you want it. But this is not, a, but it is not DPDA. It is a PDA, it is a PDA, it is a non-deterministic PDA, but it is not a DPDA. Why? Because this transitions never comes. But both are accepting deterministic context-free language. Both are accepting same language. One is DPDA, so PDA. Another one is not a DPDA, but still it is PDA. So this is what the difference is. If DPDA, it is definitely PDA. If it is PDA, need not be DPDA. See, if I give one question for you. I have a regular language. Do you really require to design finite automata? No. I can design even DPDA, I can design PDA, I can design Turing machine because you have so many powerful machines which still can accept your requirement or language. Okay? And I've just designed two languages or I've just designed two machines. As I told, you have infinite equivalent machines for this. So you decide how you want to design, but the logic should clearly explain that all the valid strings should accept. All the valid strings should accept. No invalid string should accept. Remember this point. Every valid string should accept. No invalid string should accept. Because invalid strings never been accept, never be accepted. Fine, this is the first problem we have. Let's focus on more problems one by one so that you will get to know how to design, how to design PDA. Let's focus one by one. Now, where is the difference? Where is the difference here? That means it's same as the previous language union epsilon. Just ex epsilon is the extra string that you have that you are not accepting in the previous machines. You know the entire machine, right? So where is the change I have to make? Just explain me what, are, what is the change I have to do? I'm just taking the same one from initial state a comma z0. I'll try to design a DPDA. Okay. First A, I take this transition. Second A onwards, I take this one, remaining all the A's. And when B comes, you know that A should be top of the stack. Any B comes, 
then a should be top of the stack pop it for simplicity i'll just do that here uh, this is a push a for first a right you are going to do this and the second this one push 1a for remaining every a remaining all now this one will pop a for first b that's the first b and this one will pop 1a for every b you can say if it is a plural just say push a's for remaining a's pop a's for remaining b's but you know it's 1a for 1b but this is not enough right now acceptance how do you accept here you already know taller j not do anything keep j not if you want it it's fine but accept it this will accept only a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal 1 epsilon is not accepted what do you mean by epsilon the head directly points to dollar means there is no a b so from initial state directly dollar is there on top of the stack is j not is there that means there is no a b on the input tape so from here when go to final directly when dollar comma j not combination happens do any operation just i am writing j not as a deterministic machine now this is called as the whole machine for epsilon you take this path for remaining all the strings you take this path okay fine now you may ask me the question sir how do i understand this machine it's okay i'm able to design it i'm able to design it but how do i understand when the string is given to me obviously for beginners in the new uh, when you are designing first time it will take time to understand so let me help you that too okay i have a machine a machine somebody designed for me let's say a the same machine a comma z not a z not a comma a slash a a and you have b comma a slash epsilon b comma a slash epsilon and you have something like dollar z not and you keep z not if you want it just going final here so somebody designed a machine for you just see and now given the string let me start some string is given to you let's say epsilon epsilon means what it's just dollar right epsilon followed by dollar means dollar i'm keeping at the end of the input is dollar so after epsilon keep the dollar keep the dollar you'd say dollar now any machine any pda that you take it's always begins with initial state so you will begin with a when you read the dollar when you read the dollar from here actually do you have any transition for dollar initially top of the stack is z not you know dollar comma z not you are going to read that's a combination right initially top of the stack is z not dollar z not do you have any transition no that means no path when there is no path it means it's invalid string it means epsilon is invalid string how do you get to know because that is the definition of the pda and dpda when there is no path for any string it means it is invalid string now you may ask sir why do you design like this when it is deterministic machine because in the deterministic machine you can have zero paths if the string is invalid to save your time in the construction and that's obviously definition of deterministic nature in the pda fine and uh, now that's about invalid string what about sir uh, w is equal to a what happens to this string any of we know in the language a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 in this definitely a is invalid we know that even epsilon is invalid a means a followed by dollar we know it is also invalid but how we should understand from the machine right so let's start again initially who is there on the bottom of the stack or top of the stack top of the stack dollar that's a bottom symbol 
now from a what you read a bottom of the stack let's top of the initial top of the stack that's z naught do you have any transition from a capital a this a comma z naught a z naught then you will push right you will push a so now i'm going to keep somebody here to remember my stack z naught is there now i'm going to push a so i will go to same state yes or no yes now from this a what i'm going to read because this a is over now dollar now when i'm reading dollar who is the top of the stack a what should i do dollar comma a from capital a no transition that means no path from there onwards no transition means for this string no path from initial state from a if i am trying to read this i don't find any path because it's after some time i found i found that there is no transition for particular input on top of the stack so that's why this string is invalid that's why this string is invalid if we try w is equal to b that means b dollar now what happens from a do you have any combination b comma z not any transition from here i have a comma z not i have a comma a b comma a there is no transition from a it means that string has no path the string has no path it means it is also invalid it is also invalid the finally let me talk about the string we tried totally how many strings 1 2 3 now the fourth one w is equal to a b assume dollar is the end of the input what happens now this is what happens in our machine because we designed a path first a we push next b we pop a by taking this transition after that dollar will go to final so let me take the paths here so for this string from initial state when you read a but top of the stack is z not so initially we have a z not and i'm reading this right now you will go to the same state but you will push a you will push a i performed it push then from a the next symbol is b that means i'll take this transition how do i know that the combination is b comma a what is that you pop it so we popped it and then we went to b from this b you read the dollar but what is the combination is very important dollar comma top the stack z not do you have any transition from b yes i may keep the z not as it is but i will go to final that's a c state now after reading the string did you halt at final yes that means this string is valid this is how you identify the valid strings and invalid strings again i am repeating the definition if the machine you are talking about it is a dpda then every valid string you will have exactly one path that halts at final every valid string if it is invalid string at most one path why sometimes no path you take because to save the time or this can be converted to exactly one path in case you want to design like all the transition that you are missing from here and here right you can go to dead state and stay there for every combination it will become exactly what you wanted if it is a push down automata it's i am talking about so far written mistake only push down automata are little bit too dangerous sometimes previous machine i have designed it was very simple but in future we will have a pda for the same valid string you may have multiple paths but one path will halt at least one path will halt at final remaining may not that's okay but invalid strings will never halt at final it might have a path it may not have a path but will never halt at final when the string is valid at least one path will halt at final that is non deterministic machine fine okay let's focus on the next problem to design i hope the first problem we spent enough time to understand now it's the time to design various uh, pdas for different uh, languages now now we are going to construct the push down automata for the language a is followed by b is a number of a's a more than b uh, this language can be represented many other ways too like w such that 
W belongs to A star B star strings. Of course, you want I mean greater than or equal to one, right? So I can say A plus B plus. That would be the best option. At least one A followed by at least one B. And number of A's of W should be greater than number of B's of W. Yeah, this is other way to represent the same language. So it's one of the important way to represent. Now, what are the strings you will see? A's more than B's. It means if you have one B, as you can't keep zero B's. One B, you have to keep at least two A's because A should be more, right? Similarly, if you keep one B, you have to keep three uh, A's. But if I keep two B's, like B square, then you have to keep three A's. Likewise, you have multi many strings. When I keep one B, you ha can have two A's or uh, three A's, or four A's, five A's, and so on. Now, in every string, the number of A's should be greater than number of B's. Now, what should be the logic? You know, one example I am taking. Let's say uh, you have four A's, two B's. Or three B's, it's your choice. What should be the logic to understand this? Let's say dollar is at the end of the input, as you can design uh, using DPDA, that's why I'm following deterministic nature. Now, initially, you have Z0. What I do for A, first A, I push. Second A, also I push. I'm reading input. Third A, also I push. The logic that I followed previously, exactly the same logic. Push. And now at this time, every A I pushed onto the stack. And for the first B, I am going to pop A that I popped it. The second B, I popped A. I did it. But when the dollar comes, when the dollar comes, who is at on the top of the stack? A then what's happening here when the dollar comes the top of the stack is a it means that is acceptance condition accept go to final because a's are more whoever is more right that should be left if b's are more the input you will left with a lot of symbols you have to take the decision to read if a's are more a's already happened that you kept on the stack that means when you read the B's, B's are less, that means you can't pop all the A's. Some A's left on the stack. Some A's left on the stack. When you reach end of the input, it represents more A's than B's. So very simple logic. You push all the A's, every B you pop one A, the same thing that you did for the previous language. But now, at the end of the input, guarantee that stack has left with some A's. One A at least, that is guaranteed if A's are more than B's. So, let me design the machine for you. Q0, you have two transitions, one for A comma Z0, that's push it, another combination for A comma A. Right, when B comma A comes, you just pop it, as long as you see the B's, you keep popping, When end of the input comes, that's crit critical point for us now. Whenever end of the input comes, the top of the stack must be A. That will guarantee, of course, you do whatever, I don't care. Now I decided that A is more because A is already have seen. Now end of the input occurred. I know A's are more than B's. Now you can decide, go to final. That's it. Every final will represent with double circle. Now this will guarantee that more A's than B's whenever it happens right now let's try something invalid strings epsilon is it accepted q not to qf we don't have a path dollar comma z not we don't have single a is it accepted single a you push it but dollar comma a you don't have a transition from here so single a you don't accept see can you accept single b let's try so if it is directly b comes then b comma z not should be the combination there is no B comma Z naught transition from Q naught. That means no path. So take only this string first, double A B. What do you do? Two A's you push. First A, second A. 
and v you pop one a and next dollar when dollar comes one a already left because only one b came so far so one a left on the stack you will definitely go to the final now take anything three a's one b three a's you push here first year two a's total three a's you push here one b you pop and the two a's left on the stack so dollar comma a definitely happens you go to the final and you may ask sir some symbols are left on the stack this mechanism is final state i don't care what is left on the stack i care only do, do i halt it final okay if it is empty stack mechanism you should guarantee you can't make it final you should guarantee after coming here pop remaining all the a's then stay there because no final state will not happen there so using empty stack mechanism you don't have the final only the way one way you have to do empty the stack when you accept it or when you know that string is valid when you know the string is valid keep this keep the stack as empty so make the empty stack or make the stack as empty whenever you have got the logic whenever you have decided my input is valid then make the stack is empty so that's a different behavior right okay so if you want to design empty stack so you should take extra steps here like dollar comma a you can't uh, have any final state there what you do go there first you pop this a and pop the remaining a's when gen not comes pop that also then that means the string is valid otherwise you don't pop these things okay so remember that too only for the valid strings you make this stack well you make the stack is empty okay whole including gen not you will make that stack is empty so okay this is about number of a's greater than number of base let's try another one this time number of a's less than number of base let me give you some idea two a's five base let's say end of the input is dollar you can design dpda for this too so initially you have the stack with z not what do you do same logic again first two a's you push you did this all right you push every a when b comes you pop it when b comes you pop it but at this b you got a z not right at this point i have seen many times you may go to final that's completely wrong why you did not reach end of the input without end of the input you should never go to final you may go to final but you can't halt there you can't decide there because you will halt you will decide only at this point only at this point your decision is going to be final whether it is halting at final or non final that is a that is the ultimate decision now here if you assume that you are halting you are wrong because machine never halts in the middle of the input okay because this uh, pdas are based on um, a final and non final concept at the end of the input only the pda and final data all will decide right where do they halt after reading entire string not in the middle of the string okay now the string is not at over you have to take a decision how to reach the dollar because if you take the decision now later small a may come that uh, a may come and the string may be invalid you are saying you are going to final but that's wrong okay so now b what do you do you are going to do nothing here because z not you have to keep there then only this b can you can read simply so b comma z not same combination don't do any changes keep z not only b comma z not keep the same thing but when dollar comes at this time dollar comma z not you here you are going to say accepting this is the accept condition but the before b this b comma z not is the almost at the end but just ensure that only b comes here you have to ensure here to here here to here only b are there how do you know that without reading the input you can't that's why you have to read till you reach the dollar just ensure that only b are coming then go to final so this is very important point here this is not happened for a is more than b is why because a is already you read and that you kept on the stack so the stack will left with a there is no issue you reach the end of the input a is left on the stack means it's a proper okay let's design the machine what is the q not transition same no change a comma z not a z not it will push first a remaining all the a's you can push with the other transition so these two transitions will help to push all the a's then 
when the b comes pop a one a only but every b pop one a every b pop one a but now dollar comma z not will not happen what happens b comma z not so this is the important situation from here when you face a situation like b comma z not at this time keep z not only why is that because you need to guarantee the remaining or b's only how do you know these are b's only that you have to read here especially b comma z not keep z not this will guarantee this will guarantee only b's are there but from here when you reach dollar when you reach dollar just z not on the top of the stack now do whatever because i am going to stop now because end of the input occurred so i am going to final here that's it this is how you accept the strings whenever b is more than a is if b is are more input tape left with b is if a is are more stack left with a is when the stack left with a is we don't have a problem with the final state mechanism because we don't need to make the empty stack but when you left with the base definitely without reading the whole input you can't decide so you have to read all the base ensure that only base are there after this b and you when you reach the dollar the start of the stack should be jet not to say that b is more than is okay this is the uh, pda dpda observatory this is a dpda for accepting the given language okay try now uh, you know both the languages right m greater than n or m less than n that's it you have done both now what you have to do just ensure both of them you can design deterministic you can design even that is not a deterministic machine too okay we'll try to design deterministic machine non deterministic machine is so easy to design because you already have two machines just give epsilon transition to both from the new initial state like you did in epsilon and fa now what did you do here the same thing if more a's are there what is your logic you know what to do when b uh, when dollar comma a comes you go to final when more b's are there what you did you need to ensure that only b's are left at the end so skip all of them then go to final so take any one of the machine you know this machine right so i will take that machine what is that machine every a push okay in both of them we did it so first focus on this when b comes you pop the a every b you pop the a okay but here what happens when the dollar comma a comes because a's are left on the stack right you push this symbols under the stack including z not was there this b you pop this a this b you pop this a and dollar comma a you go to final so here dollar comma a you are going to final if you want to keep keep the a we don't worry about it then go to final okay now m m greater than n is accepted number of a is more than number of b's always you take this path and accept it but now number of b's more than a's what happens here z not was there and you push them onto the stack this b you pop a this b you pop a then from here onwards you need to skip all this base and for this dollar comma z not you need to go to the final so this many combinations are going to come okay now same a is you push b is you keep on popping at one point of time b comma z not comes right b comma z not from here b comma z not this situation will ensure more b's may happen but not guaranteed because here if there is any a left in between this that's invalid string if there is any a in this that string is not from this language right 
keep Z not only and I am let us say Q2 from this Q2 any B comma J, in every B just you need to skip do not do anything on the stack just ensure only B's are there and really when dollar comes then top the stack should be dead not. So, here you can go to final no need to create another final ok dollar comma Z not if you do not want to make the empty stack just keep Z not that is it and this path will guarantee this path will guarantee more B's this path will guarantee more A's. So, more A's and this path more B's fine. So, this is a very simple when it comes to um, language already you know both individual machines now combining both of them into single machine would be easy ok. But there are other ways to design like using non deterministic nature machines this uh, problem could be more easy to design ok. You can try on your own uh, doing you know uh, rather than taking these two transitions take one transition similarly there are many other ways to do ok. What is this again is it same as the previous one no here even the number of A's equal to number of B's, but what is this problem here A power N B power N of course N might be greater than or equal to 1 or greater than or equal to 0 just you see it A is equal to B's here also, but here also A is equal to B's where is the difference here W is not mentioned A power N B power N form it could be any form what do you mean by any form here you will be seeing after A's only you will see after after A's only you will see B's, but here this is also correct here this is also correct here see that I want to say 2 A's 2 B's only, but that order is not unique right is not like this one it can come in any form, but total number of A's equal to total number of B's. Sir how is that possible I do not know how many uh, A's and how many B's in one scan directly you know I cannot remember the count, but there is a way to compare rather than remembering the count you do not you know do multiple scanning right you have to do only one scanning and you need to guarantee equal number of A's and B's how to do that how to do that any idea think about it here first A's you pushed later B's you popped all the A's but that you cannot assume here here A may come first B may come first right. So, that is how you know you need to think about ok let me take something here let me start with B I do not care who is that right. Do you have equal A's and B's check it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 B's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 A's. So, you need one more B is this valid string now if it is a valid string then you should have a logic to say that you have equal A's and B's this is the valid string if you have the equal number of A's and B's in case if it is not having equal number of A's and B's you will not have a path to the final that is it ok. Now, up think about the logic initially who is there on the stack initially Z not. Now, does not matter what input is if nobody there on the stack just push blindly here do you have any A's and B's Z not is there, but do you have any A's and B's no when that is the situation then push blindly because before this you might have been seen equal number of A's and B's. So, I believe that before this equal number of A's and B's that is why nobody on the stack. <coughs> so, what I will do I will push I will I will get a B here ok. Next when A comes I will definitely see who is on the top of the stack if the top of the stack is opposite means B then we will pop if it is the same we push because same A A we cannot pop. If the same symbols are coming like previous symbols then push if different symbols different symbol is coming compared to the previous then pop because one A will come one uh, one A will pop one B one B will pop one A. So, this is guaranteed, but if the two A's are there uh, previous symbol is A present symbol is also A 
or previous and present symbols are same, then you do not pop it as you have to remember it. So, this A is going to pop 1 B, you can see that I am going to pop this. So, pop which one opposite symbol previous symbol is B, so you are going to pop. Now, when you look at A, who is on the top of the stack now? This B was deleted. Now, Z not only left. So, what you do now? You are going to push as I do not see anybody on the stack. So, I am going to push this A, I am going to push. I did that. So, assume this whole thing is stack, okay. Assume this entire thing is a stack now. I am going to utilize that way, okay. Now, this B, where, who is the top of the stack now? A. So, now I am going to pop this one. When B comes, is there anybody on the stack except Z not? No one. So, B I am going to push, I am going to push. This B, previous symbol is also B. So, what you do? You have to push. So, I am going to push here on the stack itself. So, both the B's I am going to push, I did that. When A comes, top of the stack is B, I am going to pop. Top of the stack is B, I am going to pop, because same symbol we do not have on the stack. When A comes, nobody there on the stack. So, what we do? We push. When B comes, we pop, opposite symbol was there. A comes, nobody is there. What we do? We push. When B comes, we pop, because different symbol was in the top of the stack. When at the end of this symbol comes or end of the string, end of the string that is end symbol, end terminal, we can say that when end of the string happens, if the top of the stack is Z naught, then go to final. Now, here you decide accept. If condition is dollar comma Z naught, remember that if it is not Z naught, somebody left, somebody left, then you cannot decide that way. Here, what should be there? dollar comma z naught, dollar comma z naught, then only you will accept. If dollar comma a, dollar comma b, we do not accept, because dollar comma a represent a is more, dollar comma b represent b is more, whoever is more that will left on the stack, because we guarantee that uh, if anybody is coming extra, we are pushing it, like you know, first b we got and a we popped, a extra came, see that at this point of time, we have at this point of time, we have equal A's and B's, that is why stock was, stack was empty when A comes, that is why we push D. And look at that, at this point of time, again the stack, sorry not this, ah yes, at this point of time, again see, 2 B's, 2 A's. So, at this point, when this B comes, only Z not left, only Z not left. So, remember again, at this point of time, you look at here, till, till here, equal number of A's and B's. So, at this point of time, again, the stack is left with Z naught. So, this A we pushed again and at this point of time equal number of A's and B's here. Again when this A comes only Z naught there that is why A we pushed right and at this point of time we are having equal number of A's and B's. So, whenever equal number of A's and B's happens stack left with Z naught. So, that is a very beautiful concept right and suppose this B is not there then who will left with the stack? Who will left on the stack? A. If in place of A, if you have only this B, then B will push. When dollar comes, who is there on the stack? A means A's are more. If B is there, B's are more. If nobody is there, only Z naught is there, means both are equal. So, these are the three conditions only we are going to design, right? So, based on this, I am going to design now. So, what are the conditions you are going to consider now? Right? We have, let us say, you have A here and top of the stack is Z naught. What we do? We push, right? Not only this, B, A or B does not matter, A or B, both the situations we push. And what else we have? Suppose you have A and top of the stack somewhere, A, then we push. This is the first scenario, let us say second scenario, second case, third case. B is the present input and top of the stack 
is a B, then also we push because same symbols we don't compare. Now the last case that is the fourth case, if dollar comes the top of the stack must be Z0 then we accept otherwise we don't accept because as per our logic both should be equal A's and B's. So all the A's should cancel all the B's or all the B's should cancel all the A's somehow in the sequence. Now using these four cases I am going to design a machine. Look at that. Q0 is initial state. Who comes first? We really, really don't know. But top of the stack is Z0. But A comes or B comes, we push. That is the case one. So I am just writing here. A comes, A might come first, B might come first. We don't know. A comma Z0 or B comma Z0. In these two situations, we push. And remember, there is no meaning to this order. Either I, this might happen first or this might happen first. I told already, even though I kept one edge, but two different transitions we have, they can come in any order. Okay? I might be writing this order, but that's not going to happen. They are independent orders. Okay? This is for whenever the top of the stack is Z0, you just push them, whatever the next symbol comes. Okay? After this, if the same symbol comes like A comma A might happen or B comma B might happen. This could happen anytime, right? If already A is there, A is coming, you just push it. And already B is there, if B is coming as an input, push it. And that is the second case we have. What is the other case? Opposite symbols. If A is there, B comes. If B is there, A comes. Then what is that? Total how many cases I have taken here? Same case, same case. Opposite case, I missed it. Let us take opposite case as the fifth case if you want. That is, if A is here, and B is here, opposite symbols we have, then pop. Like we have two cases here, uh, B A, A B, that is B A, another one is A B. So opposite symbols, take it as one more case, that is the sixth case. If you have A and top of the stack is B, then pop. Okay. So understand all the cases here, this is one case we have. This is another case we have. Okay. <coughs> when stack has no symbol, same symbols push, opposite symbols pop, and uh, at the end of the input, how to accept. <coughs> okay. Now opposite symbols. A comma B, another one B comma A. So this time we pop, nobody left push, same symbols push, opposite pop, but when do you accept? When dollar comes, nobody left on the stack means only left Z0 and do whatever but go to final, that is it. <coughs> so remember this 4 will perform the push operation, this 2 will perform pop operation, why is that? because you are going to compare A's with B's, B's with A's, that is why you are popping it remaining when A's with A's we do not compare as we have to remember both of them, so we push, if nobody there you have to remember, so we will push. So what is this push operation? Basically when you want to remember, you perform the push, that is when you want to remember that is first count, you want to remember push, but the next when the opposite symbols are coming, you want to cancel it, it just pop, it is similar like you know count in a, in a program count uh, counter will keep on incrementing so the push is going to happen like counter incrementing the pop is like counter decrementing so when you decrement you re, you are trying to remember it but you got a match so you are deleting something and when the first time it is happening count you are trying to increment the count you are trying to increment the count so later when there is a match you are trying to decrement the count when the count happens to zero that means both are equal somehow Okay. So, this is a deterministic pushdown automata which are going to accept the number of A's equal to number of B's it independent of the symbols order in the string. Okay. So, it should accept, it should accept epsilon initially, see this is epsilon and A B should accept, B A should accept and what else? 
a a b b should accept b b a a should accept a b a b should accept b a b a should accept and a b b a should accept b double a b should accept and so on whatever the string whether it starts with b or a doesn't matter if number of a is equal to number of b's then definitely you will halt at final as this will guarantee every a will compare with b if the string has equal number of a's and b's at the end of the string you will definitely take this transition to reach final okay next very interesting number of a's less than number of b's what do you mean by number of a's less than b's here remember who is more that is very important that's it who is more here a or b b's so let's take one example what happens if b's are more any any so let's take b b a a a b b who is more b is more i don't know who's who is going to be appearing on the stack in the beginning but at the end i can guarantee if b is more b will left on the stack that's guaranteed if a is more a will left on the stack when i reach the dollar if both are equal nobody will be there except jen not so let's see that who is more b is more okay take more base if you want it then as per my logic who should left on the stack b should left so i will do perform the, i'll perform the same thing what i did in the previous problem equal case initially who is there j not b we push we are going to push as nobody there b push why because b and b both are same symbols so we push a what we do after this sorry perform push two bs then a we pop opposite symbols are opposite symbol is there on the stack a we pop but at this point of time you can see equal a's bs happen so this third a we have to push because nobody left on the stack except j not so a we push and then b we pop we can't push the b because a was already there in the stack now when this b comes we have to push why because nobody there in the stack so we have to push and this b also we will push and dollar comes who is there b so it means b is more that's enough no need to check the below because if b is there on the top of the stack everybody should be there everybody should be there as b only because we can't push above ab or above ba we only push the b's if any symbol left on the stack or we only push a's but when a is present b never present on the stack when b is present when a never present on the stack but at some point of time a might appear at some point of time b might appear on the stack but all the time same symbols will be there on the stack otherwise they're not only there right at the, at the same instance you can't see both a and b on the stack different instances you can see only a's or only b's okay so this is how you decide the b's more but my question is what b's more so you can approach the same logic concept is same what should i do a comma j not b comma j not a comma a b comma b all these four cases push right push means a j not here b j not here a a because already a is there you have to push a b b and opposite symbols a input b is at of the stack b is input a is at of the stack both of them you pop right both are different scenarios different situations too but when end of the input comes who should be there on the stack j not represent equal and b represent b is more so i want to be b is more so uh, later doesn't matter what you do you go to final now you check <coughs> when the b's are more will it be accepted like all the valid strings you take and check are they accepting are they going to final and halting there okay that's your homework this class check all the strings valid strings should halt at final invalid string it's okay if you don't have a path that's fine anything else that you wanted to understand here okay we will go for another problem to just scratch it can you do homework number of a's greater than number of b's what do you do 
okay <coughs> sorry only the transition that is dollar comma a this represent a is more a is more then go to final now you may have a question sir all the time you are designing like a dpda can i design some other way yes you can do it you can do it but you know think about how do you combine like you know you have a and anything that you want to push no right when z not comes you want to push and b comma z not you want to push so just keep it when the same symbol comes you have to push that's why here writing non deterministic is very difficult of course you can write by putting some other symbols push a comma b pop and b comma a pop so this motion is for number of a's more than number of b's a's more that's why here a's more so a should left on the stack in case if anybody asking sir i don't want to design this way i want to say the like number of a's of w greater than or equal number of b's of w can you think of it here greater than will come or will come so here two cases here a's greater than b's or a's number of a's equal to number of b's this is already greater right number of a's greater than number of b's so how do you guarantee number of a's equal to number of b's just ensure from q not dollar comma z not may also happen because that is guaranteed equal so apart from this there is another situation dollar comma z not so only one thing here dollar comma z not that you should add from q not to qf that's it take another transition here dollar comma z not either dollar comma z not may happen or dollar comma a okay this one dollar comma a from q not to qf so already we have this one so just add one more transition here dollar comma z not that will accept greater than or equal to strings number of a's more or equal to number of b's i'll give you logic for this problem so assume it is homework problem for you but logic will be provided to you okay a power n b power n c power m such that m comma n greater than or equal to 0 so what is equal here a's and b's you need to compare so any number of c's can happen so somebody can written as plus such that n greater than 0 means greater than or equal to 1 right or you can say greater than or equal to 1 the other way to write the same language so only comparison between a's and b's right so what do you do for this a's you push same number of a's you push so push a's here and here the same number of a's you pop what happens when c comes first c comes z not will be there so all the c's what you do just skip don't push or don't pop c comma z not just keep the not c comma z not keep the not but stay in the same state read every c when the dollar comes go to final that's it so these are the three things you have to take care okay so what you do i'll just write it <coughs> push as from initial state guarantee you push all the as and the next pop a but first b guarantee one a definitely was there otherwise this n greater than or equal to 1 not guaranteed so this is a very important b comma a means when the b comes a definitely happened that means at least one b and a guaranteed so pop it and that <coughs> every b pop is that is i am just writing pop is but you know b comma a you should write b comma a slash epsilon then when the first c comes there is a first c z not should be there it means this z not is a key for you this z not what is this z not says it says that this a's and b's are matched that is the reason oh whatever the b's happened the what of the b's occurred all the b's popped the existing a's on the stack so that is the reason when the first c comes z not only left on the stack otherwise c comma a happens c comma a means a is more c comma a means a is more suppose here itself uh, b comma z not happened that means b's are more so that's how you decide you are not only equal here a's and b's equal but you can also design a machine a's greater than b's b's greater than a's you can also check that things 
while designing it. But I am designing for A's and B's equal, but in the exam, they may say A's greater than B's for the same pattern. Still, you can do that. When C comes, nobody should be there on the stack except Z0 to say these two are equal. So, you just keep the Z0 and from here onwards, you just skip all the C's. How do you do that? C comma Z0 slash Z0, same thing you copy paste here. Like the same thing you did, right? The same way you did here. You do here. And then here, when you see dollar, end of the input, Z0 is there, just go to final. So, almost I did it. But in the exam, you should not design the machine. You just understand whether you have a DPDA for it. That would be sufficient to say it is DCFL, deterministic context free language. If you want to say it is DCFL, you should know how to design a DPDA. Of course, do not worry about how to design a PDA. If you know you can design a PDA, you cannot answer it, it is a DCFL. If you want to say it is DCFL, you should know how to design a DPDA. Of course, PDA might be so easy than this. But you should not think that way, right? Saying CFL could be so easy than DCFL. Okay, you give me regular language, I can say CFL. But how do you know that it is a regular? You should prove that you have a DFA or write regular expression for that, right? Now we know it is DCFL because we have a DPDA for it. But don't look for the shortcuts. Shortcuts can happen only when you understand this logic. Okay, those people who are not able to understand this logic. You have to focus on how we do push and pop operations to compare the two symbols deterministically. Okay? I hope you can do it. I am going to do two homework, but this homework I have answered completely. Only the thing is you just copy paste that what how to push and pop. But next two is good homeworks for you. It is I am saying DCFL. So design DPDA, of course, you can design PDA also, okay? Rather than DPDA. Here the language is W ash W power R. It means single ash is valid because W is epsilon, hash is your valid input, and A ash A is valid, B ash B is valid, and double A ash double A is valid, and A B ash. Now look at this is the reverse of the string, right? So here it should be B A. Reverse. Like all the strings are valid. In case if you see something like a b a a b before ash, then how the other string reverse of the string should happen? This b will happen here. Similarly, just like a stack order, designing is so easy for you. If you think how to perform the push and pop operations, it would be so easy. Okay, how do you do that? Till ash, push everything. But ash do not push, skip it. When you get this ash, you should know that you are performing the pop operation. So, if the top, if the input is B, then top of the stack must be B, pop it. If the input is A, top of the stack must be A. If input is A, top of the stack must be A. If the input is B, top of the stack must be B. If the input is A, top of the stack must be A. So, you are going to compare this, of course, I already matched it, right? So, you are going to push this onto the stack somehow, Z0 already there and you just skip this, but you push these symbols and for these symbols you are going to pop by matching. You need to match with the same symbol like if B comes B has to be here, if A comes A has to be here, right? And when dollar comes just top of the stack should be Z0 that makes you accept it. If top of the stack is equal to Z0, then accept. Almost I have given the logic for this. Only the thing is you need to know from Q0, how do you push till ash? Every combination you have to push. That means how many combinations are there? A comma Z0, B comma Z0. Anything here A have taken, but other string B might be there, right? So A comma Z0, B comma Z0. And in this, any how many combinations may come? A comma A, B comma B, A comma B, B comma A. All the combinations you have to push. How long? When till ash. When the ash comes, who should be there? See, W is anything, right? Including epsilon. When the ash comes here, top of the stack may be B, may be A, or nobody might be there. Only Z not might be there. So ash comma Z not, ash comma B, ash comma A. You need to change the state. But from here onwards, if B comes. B should be there. That means B comma B slash epsilon pop. If A comes, 
a comma a slash epsilon so from all these things you can do from one state all these things you can do in one state so just do ensure like this here push w means how to push it i am not saying it is already i told it is homework right how do you push w i have already sp uh, spoken everything like every combination a comma z naught b comma z naught a comma a b comma b a comma b b comma a all of them you push how long till you get ash i already told this when ash comes what is there here z naught might be there a might be there b might be there don't do anything keep the same because we don't pop them right here go to some state pop here pop how do you pop by match like if a comes a should be there b comes b should be there like a comma a slash epsilon b comma b slash epsilon here when dollar comes z naught should be there then go to final almost i did it as spoken everything just you follow that and design it that's called as w ash w power r at least ash accepted okay now one more i'm going to give another homework but that is really challenging one problem really i take half an hour to one hour so that's why i am giving you really homework all these problems after understanding all these problems please try to spend enough time to understand this problem all the 10 problems are when you combine all of them and that's equivalent to this problem it's harder to that equivalent to all combined 10 problems so that means there is a speciality with this it is a context free language but this first language we are seeing it previous 10 languages are actually deterministic context free languages that's why you can design a dpda as well as you can also design which is not a dpda you may design other than that dpda you can design pds too but the this one you cannot design design dpda you have to design only pda only pda so pda exists here but we don't have no d but we don't have dpda there is no dpda for this language it means uh, designing might be so easy but understanding only difficult because of non determinism okay so there are very very easy ways anyhow it's homework but i'm just showing somebody who might want an answer i'll just design my way one way it could be so easy to accept okay how easy to design you will see it w w power r right really don't know when that reverse of the string happens i'm just saying push the w so what do you do here like now it is anyhow deterministic not helps so <coughs> push that's enough no need to say z not comes a comes b comes as the top of the stack we no need to look at a comes or b comes push how long randomly sometime randomly sometime but when the string is valid definitely there is a path that reaches to final invalid anyhow never reaches final i don't know when i will change my mind but i'll go to some state if really this is the middle of the string i'll definitely pop all match symbols if i take the right decision then definitely when end of the string comes i'll go to final so this path happens only for the valid strings you will reach here only when you take the decision w you pushed and it's reverse you popped exactly by matching then only you can take this otherwise no you may ask sir valid strings i may not reach this path i may end up with this no path sometimes that's okay but if the string is valid definitely one path at least one path exists that reaches final remaining paths may or may not reach so this is how you should design for non deterministic but you know think more about why we should design this way and this is the only one way no there are many other machines you can design for the same language but how non deterministic machines are designed like pushing the w and popping <coughs> w in reverse order that's a w power r this is a w and this situation is non deterministic you don't know when this happens right so you push for some time maybe after uh, from beginning only you start thinking if epsilon it takes this path if it is a push it but don't know how to go to the final 
because dollar comma z not will not happen dollar comma a happens if i am going to take this path so it will not <laughs> single b push it skip and dollar b comma b happens so you will not take that path if it is a b a you push b also push it but here you can't take this one if a push go there then b comma a we don't have a path <coughs> suppose you have a double a one a you push skip of course, epsilon means jump here, then other year you pop and you can take this path because stack is having only z naught. So, double year you can accept. So, epsilon you can accept this path, one year you push, take epsilon, one year you pop and go to final. Double b you can accept, one b you push, epsilon, other b you pop and accept because double b is a palindrome, this is nothing but set of even length palindromes. So, work out, you have lot of other machines to design. So, if you have any doubts, you can approach me uh, to clear your doubts. Let us uh, take it as homework and work on it. With this, uh, we have uh, understood how to design the PDA and there are DCFLs, there are not DCFLs within the CFLs, right. That is the reason you should know CFL and DCFL. <coughs> <coughs> These are DCFLs, all the languages here you have something like DCFL1, some language here, some language DCFL2, some language DCFL3, likewise you have infinite DCFLs, right. Here you have so many all CFLs here, all CFLs here. But within this here even though both are CFLs, but this is not DCFL1 let us say, this is not DCFL2. There are other not DCFLs outside that I am not going to talk about, only I am talking those not DCFLs which are inside CFLs. Now all of them are CFLs, whether it is DCFL or this not DCFL, both are context free languages only, correct. But here you will see the languages which are also not DCFLs, which are also not CFLs. So, these are not considered here, okay. Some not DCFLs only CFLs, okay. I hope you are able to understand there are many, many languages we have here examples like we have seen that right that comes under this one like not only this one there are many other languages uh, what else we have a power n b power 2 n what is this every a you push two a's so that every b you can pop one a so this is possible deterministically so this kind of languages comes under this dcfls class whereas outside dcfls both are anyhow they are cfls too but here not dcfl case like last example i have given homework right w w power r such that w belongs to a comma b whole star this language especially is not a DCFL, but it is still has a PDA that is why it comes under CFLs. Likewise, there are many languages we have within the CFLs, some are DCFLs, some are not DCFLs, okay. So, now we are going to categorize these languages and we are going to understand what languages are CFLs, what languages are DCFLs, okay. First question is, Sir, we have so many languages, how do you identify? Yes, really a uh, challenging question for us. That is why you require to practice lot to get to know what languages, how do we identify? Is there any simple algorithm? If it is simple algorithm, everybody will follow and answer it, right? If I ask you, um, can you design uh, algorithm for sorting? But how many sorting algorithms? So many. Likewise, for any given language, your approach is very important. Like sorting, you have various techniques, quick sort method and so on, like identifying the language also you need to approach a different ways so that you can conclude with the proper answer. Example, I know this language is regular, but how you prove it? Like show me regular expression or show me finite automata, show me regular grammars, many approaches are there, right? So think about one way that, that will be enough. Now, you are talking about CFL, DCFL, but I will talk about every language that you know about so far. Language, have you remembered 
finite yes this finite is what regular this regular is what definitely dcfl every dcfl is what definitely cfl so there is no doubt to say that every finite is regular every finite dcfl every finite cfl so when the language is finite you this all statements are correct but don't use a converse every regular you can't say finite every dcfl you can't say finite every cfl you can't say finite but you can say every finite is regular hence dcfl so cfl right now other side you have infinite language over any sigma if the language is infinite we already categorized in the regular languages if over one symbol if the that language is over one symbol we have seen two cases one case forms ap arithmetic progression we say directly regular but once it is regular it is also dcfl it is also cfl that means about dcfl cfl we have already started learning but at that time we do not know the relation that's why we did not come to this point but right now you want to say dcfl then every finite you can say dcfl every regular also you can say dcfl and over one symbol if it is not forming ap not forms ap the strings of language not forms ap you are going to say not regular right but this is one of the important point for you not regular hence you can say not cfl so i'm not writing arrows i'm just writing answers here it is also not dcfl it is also not cfl why is that <coughs> it is one of the important point here i'm putting a box specially three stars i'm putting here the reason is the stack is useless only one symbol remember this point when you are talking about one symbol see you only have is how the stack will help you if you have at least somebody is there so this two is you can push when ash comes you can change your mind you can start popping but only a one symbol is there language is over one symbol the stack is useless even you have the stack you can't perform beyond or more than finite automata so somebody might ask or in the future gate exam you may see if pda over a language which is having one symbol to define the strings of the language right then that pda is equivalent to finite automata that means even though you have the stack indirectly i am saying i am saying that stack is useless for you because my language has only one symbol to form it okay so that's important but at least you have one more symbol addition to that symbol it might be useful the stack might be useful okay that is the reason here when the language is having only one symbol you can't have any string more than one symbol then in that case all regulars are cfls obviously that's true all non regulars are also not cfls see that if it is a not regular if you don't have a finite meta you don't have a pda for this language especially and this point i am talking about over one symbol over one symbol pda and finite meta are equivalent see this is another point i am concluding if the language has one symbol pda and finite meta both will work same they are having equal ex expressive power okay keep this point in your mind if the language is defined over one symbol pd and finite meta are equivalent because they accept same class of languages okay they can't have more lang even if you compare pd and finite meta nobody has more than other other machine right next if it is more than one symbol the size of the sigma greater than 1 this language is i am talking about here the language might be regular because of no dependency or language might be not regular because of some dependency or not forming ap some cases in that case regular every regular is what dcfl no doubt every dcfl is what cfl no doubt if it is not regular here the situations may change 
not regular may be DCFL or may be you will see not DCFL two situations you will face as you see regular class outside some are DCFL some are outside that not DCFLs in this DCFL every DCFL is what CFL no need to worry much about it but when it is not DCFL some comes under CFLs some are comes under not even context free language ok. So, it is one of the important point here we need to focus a lot remaining all you did it you know that, but this thing you did not see so many not regulars you have written, but some of them are DCFLs some of them are not DCFLs if it is not DCFLs some are CFLs some are not CFLs even if it is not CFLs in future some are CSLs some are not CSLs ok class is very big you know right Chomsky hierarchy it is how do you identify CFL and DCFL ok. There are a lot of examples we have to practice we will do that ok. If you want one example for each case yes I will do that too. Finite. a power n b power n such that n less than 10 this case ok uh, forms a p you know that a power 2 n n greater than or equal 0 not forms a p if you want that example I will just write here here a power n factorial or a power prime you know that regular regular or more than one symbol like a star b star no dependency at all between the symbols of a and b a symbols of sigma not regular which is dcfl but not regular that is a power n b power n not regular and that is not dcfl but still cfl that is you can see w w power r but over more than one symbol do not forget that ok writing w w power r you cannot take sigma is equal to a ok not cfl uh, like a power n b power n c power n such languages are not going to be possible with one stack ok fine uh, this is about how to identify the language which is might be finite or which might be regular or which might be DCFL or which might be CFL. So, you need to focus on all this uh, different approaches to understand ok, but anyhow this is not an algorithm only the approach how you can come up with a quick answer when you know the concept behind that ok. Now, I cannot say the not forms AP if you are not good at how to find not form AP you cannot answer it no doubt right. If you do not know how to form AP or if the language is how it is forming AP if you do not know then definitely you do not know the regular if you do not know why the language is regular you cannot answer it you do not know why the language is non regular you cannot answer it too. So, every situation you should know why you are concluding that statement ok. Identify the language L very simple a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 0 you know this right I want to answer exactly the correct one it is not regular ok it is not regular we know it it is not regular we did in the regular languages. So, definitely regular but not finite is wrong it is not finite it is infinite but still you cannot answer option A because of you cannot say regular DCFL is it DCFL yes because we have a PD, DPDA for that is it a CFL it is a DCFL and it is not regular so we have chosen it correct but even though CFL is correct but you are saying not DCFL this statement is wrong it is a DCFL right it is DCFL but you are saying not DCFL ok. So, you have to choose appropriately the right option. So, I am going to choose another way like option A you have regular option B you have DCFL option C you have CFL option D you have none. So, which one you will choose DCFL and CFL ok. These statements are uh, MSQ type these statements are MSQ type ok. When they want to ask MCQ type then 
they will form this way and when they when you want to uh, when they want to have multiple options correct then they can give this way but anyhow you, you see the difference right every dcfl is cfl when already it is dcfl you have to choose cfl but here the condition is cfl it is not dcfl is contradicting our statement to say both dcfl and cfl that's why we don't choose this option c okay next question i'm just asking another one a power n b power 2 n n greater than or equal 0 now you may ask the question sir what is the logic for this very simple every a what you do push two a's when you read every input right every a push two a's sir how do you do that it's very simple right something like q naught okay let me draw the diagram for you you're reading a comma z naught how to push two a's a z uh, sorry two a's right not one a double a z naught so how is this valid is it really deterministic you see the diagram right q cross uh, sigma cross gamma implies q cross gamma star what is it gamma star here you have a <coughs> sorry let us take this capital a capital a comma sigma is small a gamma is z naught and equal to, again you are going to capital a and gamma star is double a z naught satisfying definition right you can push two a's three a's for 100 a's but you can't look at it a time that many a's you have to look at only one symbol but you can push as many as you want why in while programming i can per i can write push operation 10 times if i want to push 10 symbols in a sequence right just i want to push a push a two times in a sequence that in a program i can write it in a sequence yes it is a deterministic transition no doubt here what you do don't say every two b's because two b's i can't read it a time right so every one b i can pop now one b only every one b you pop one b that's how at the end of the input when dollar comes you should have only z naught how this has happened actually you were trying to do a power 2n a power 2n but 1a a power n comes you do this many push when b power n comes when b power 2n comes 2n comes you pop that many a's this is going to be equal this is going to be twice but this are going to be equal somehow you are making this as equal for n a's you push 2 n a's for 2 n b's you are popping 2 n a's because this you made it double you made it twice that is why it is matching with the base exactly ok there are many other logics too fine it is going to be a dcfl but not regular as you have a dependency you do not have a finite automata for this so dcfl but not regular and you cannot choose other two options l is equal to what about a power 2 n b power n can you think about this can you think about this i want to do one thing here instead of reading one a as one a, every a push to a's now what i do i i will make it off so how is that possible making off think logically 2 n a's i am reading I do not want to push 2 n a's, I want to push n a's. How? Every 2 a's, I will push 1 a. But you may ask the question, so how can I read 2 a's at a time? No, we never read that any time. What we will do, first a, like if you have, let us say, this way. Anyhow, even number of a's only happens, right? 1 a, you skip. Other a, you push. Repeat that, right? For every 2 a's, push 1a only every 2 a's push 1a that does not mean that you are reading 2 a's at a time you are reading 1a at a time but logically you make a cycle your initial state right you make a cycle something like that here you skip 1a and here you push 1a that is it here input you are skipping so nothing happens on the stack here you read an input 1a and push 1a so 2 a's you push 1a but that you need to take care of how do you take the combination of input and top of the stack 
okay that you try to design so here i'm just writing every two a's but logic is here how do you do that push one a so what happens for two n input a's you will have n stack symbols right n a's on the stack then every b every b you can pop one a every b you can pop just one a that will work so what you did here a power 2n b power n for a power 2n you push a power n symbols for b power n you pop exactly the same symbols pop the same n comparison so here a power n is a key you made it off while push so that for b is exactly it matches it matches equal fine that's why you have it is dcfl but not regular anyhow you can't say not dcfl you can design this machine deterministically using the stack and if you do not know what is dpda it's going to be your own work because logic is given to you using this logic you should be in a position to design dpda now very simple a power 2n b power 2n such that n greater than or equal to 0 what do you do <coughs> two things there is a difference a power n b power n it means equal number of a's and b's a power 2n b power 2n it is also equal number of a's and b's but these two are not same why here you see that 1a 1b accepted but here 1a 1b not accepted not there not in the language if you design a machine a b should not a b should accept here a b should not accept because a power that means even is followed by even b's but these two are equal right so if you want to write the same form then here what happens this is equal to a power n b power n such that n is equal to even okay both should be equal both should be equal but that should be even count now how you do that even right how do you guarantee that so while push only while push only i'll guarantee that i'm pushing even is so that while popping i don't need to check right so you just maintain two states this is even is this is odd is and now the same you push every a like anything happens right push a here also push a but you are reading a only you are reading a only read a push a read a push a but b should come only from here b comma a should come from here only because i need to guarantee even is only happened okay in case you are not in a position to understand this transition i'll help you what happens in the beginning a comma z not what do you do push later what happens a comma a push it later what happens a comma a slash w and this is always a comma a only so this will take care of if the b is coming here definitely a's must be even but after this you need to check b's and a's equal so start popping compare b comma a pop that's it if really b's and a's are equal from here dollar comma z not should happen at any cost to go to the final that's it you got the machine right the b never comes with our number of a's because a power 2n is there and how many a's happens that many b should be there but a's first should be even so that same number of b's will come that means b's also even but the same number of uh, symbols that you have seen in a's that's it so do you have a deterministic yes it is a deterministic and some people might think sir you have taken two transitions here for the same a yes but not the same top of the stack that's why they are deterministic when you say it is not deterministic from this state a comma z not from the same state a comma z not you are doing something else see i can't have two different uh, transitions for the same input and top of the stack but here a comma z not a comma a both are different combination okay both are different and this this one b comma a so if you are assuming these two are different transitions these two are different transitions but these two are different combinations also input and top of the stack okay anyhow just understand if you are in this you are going here 
you are going here and you are doing push, you are also doing push, that is going to be non-deterministic, it never happens in deterministic. Okay. Anyhow, this is a DCFL again, which is not regular and anyhow other two options are not correct. A power m, b power n, c power k such that m plus n is equal to k. Now what is the meaning of this? See m plus n equal to k, we know a is followed by b is followed by c is, first a is you push, whether a is comes or not, does not matter, if a is comes push it, b is comes push it, then for c is B's you start popping, once the B's are over you will pop A's, instead of confusing this while you are pushing A's and B separately, push let us say Y's, here also push Y's, when C comes start popping only Y's, that means whatever the Y's you pushed the same number of Y's you should pop if you want to say at the end of the input, at the end, at the end dollar comma Z not should happen to accept. Example, suppose I have 1 A, 2 B's, 3 C's, then what you do? A push, oh what I am pushing here? Y is right, you can do that too right? Y and B one more Y, B one more Y and the C you pop one Y, another C, when end of the input happens, Z not, so accept it, it will guarantee. So, deterministically I am able to design push down automata, so it is deterministic push down automata, hence it is DCFL, but not regular because of dependency between the symbols, between the symbols. Similarly, you may think about A power M, B power M plus and C power N. Okay, m, m, m comma n greater than or equal 0 which is again DCFL and I am giving you homework for that just think about it, homework and in case if you see that it is not DCFL please uh, comment below this video, we will discuss that. Okay. Now, W ash W such that W belongs to A star, what is the meaning of this? It is nothing but a power n ash a power n, that is it, because w has only one symbol, language is not having one symbol. Remember that in this ash here sigma you may assume a comma ash, do not assume only a, w might be over one a, over one symbol, but language is not over one symbol, along with a there is one more symbol ash in the string, that is why do not consider w is your language alphabet. W might be defined over A, but language might be having more than one symbol. So, this is how you should understand here language is not over one symbol. Okay. So, what is it? A power n, all the symbols you push, every A push 1A and the pop A's, every A pop 1A, but when the ash comes you skip it at the end of the input Z not only left that is a DCFL because deterministically you can design. So, it hardly takes off minute if you know this concept, if you do not know the concept and definitely uh, could be difficult to answer which is DCFL, right. That is why we spend more time in constructing the machine rather than answering these questions. W ash W power r such that W belongs to A comma B whole star this time we already designed it, whatever it comes A's and B's push all of them, push all symbols of W as it is, we do not push W remember, we push the symbols of W and as we skip this symbols definitely we match with the W, so pop by matching like A comma A, B comma B, if really this happens when the dollar comes at, at the end Z not should left on the stack, so that is the DCFL again. Okay. Similarly, you can design lot of languages 
on your own see here a power n b power n c power n why it's not cfl even it's not regular it's not dcfl it's not cfl2 why it's not because you have three symbols you need to have the two stacks at least to check all the three symbols if you are only comparing a's and b's the c's cannot compare with a's and b's together you can't solve see here a power m b power n c power m plus n this can be solved it's a cfl right but this is something different all the three should be equal here right previous one some of the two symbols is equal to other count that was okay but this one is uh, you know having three symbols comparison simultaneously you need two stacks at least what you can do when the ace comes you can push ace here ace here when b comes you can use one stack c comes you can use other stack to check but how many stacks we have only one stack definitely this is impossible with the help of one stack that is the reason we'll go to none of this we'll go to none of this you may ask sir can you give one example for this option c so that you will have little bit confidence to answer that option c too that is a power m b power n c power k such that m is equal to n or m is equal to k in this case you see number of a's it is actually two combination when m equal to n is there that means a power n b power n c star when m equal to k is there that is a power n b star c power n here a's and c's are equal here a's and b's are equal one more question here sir here you have used n that's fine because m equal to n sir why did you use here a power c power n if it is mk that doesn't matter we are just saying that a and c are equal right this mk i no need to use to represent this form right i want to say a and c are equal we have union of this two here just i want to say which two symbols are equal okay fine here a's and b's are equal here a's and c's are equal but you know when you push the a's b's comes you may pop a or you may skip b's what is happening two types of strings are there your string might be double a double b three c's or your string might be double a one b two c's but both strings are valid what should i do here if the string is here one b will pop this a one other b will pop this a and this c you will skip if the string is this one this b you will skip but this c will pop a this c will pop a but what to do should i compare b with s or should i compare c with s i can do only one thing deterministically but non deterministically you have to design now because there is no dpda for this you have to tell me on b what to do from this state once i push the s now you should take only one you should tell me one thing for every b what to do or at least tell me for first b what to do for second b what to do it's okay second b i'll do the same thing what you say but say uniquely now here every a push both of them but here every b pop one a and here every b skip how i do once i push all the a's here all a's i push then here one this one says that every b pop a that one says that every b skip that means let's say epsilon slash epsilon don't do anything on the stack how i do two things simultaneously otherwise b comma a slash a if you want to say that b comma a slash a right so this leads to non deterministic there is uh, no dpda for this okay but already you know there are two concepts you can design this side b is equal to s then skip the c's at the end go to final this side skip all the b's but don't touch the a's don't delete the a's here skip all the b's then every c pop one a and at the end of the string should go to final state dollar comma zero not so there are two paths so string might be this or might be this anyhow it is non deterministic if the string is valid at least one path reaches to final if the string is invalid we, never, we will never have a path to the final okay so that is how this non deterministic machines are designed but pda exist 
this PDA by definition what non deterministic uh, push down automata ok. What is this language CFL but not DCFL and other two you can't design PDA sorry DPDA and finite automata you can't design. I hope you have understood how to identify the languages right. Let me take uh, some strings like a power uh, 2 power n such that n greater than or equal 0. Here you know this language is what non regular because which does not form AP right we have seen in the previous lectures. If it is not regular we already know which is also not a DCFL and not a CFL we already know it why because over one symbol stack is not required at all even though you have it stack will not help you to understand this problem ok. Stack you can say is useless to understand or to accept this language because of this the finite automata and PDA are equivalent. If language is over one symbol if language is designed over one symbol that is why we go to all the three options are wrong this will go to none of this ok. It is anyhow not CFL right you cannot say DCFL CFL any of this so we will go to. Similarly uh, if you have uh, remembered the language A star B star ok. So, what is this A star B star? It is infinite language, yes. Uh, is it correct? Not finite, that is correct. Is it regular? Yes. So, we will choose option A. And why we do not choose option B? Because you are saying here not regular, but it is already regular, so we do not choose this. It is already DCFL, but you are saying not DCFL, so we do not choose it. So, we will choose option A when the language is regular and infinite. But also remember one more point when you have something like a power n square such that n less than 100 oh this is going to be finite language oh, language over one symbol it is fine but don't look at that it is not infinite language right when it is finite language we don't look at over one symbol or two symbols it's a finite set so it has to be regular right it has to be regular it has to be dcfl and cfl and so on but here <laughs> you are saying not finite, so wrong, you are saying not regular, so wrong, you are saying not DCFL, wrong, that is why we will choose none of this ok. I hope you are able to understand how to identify the languages ok. Using this you try to you know solve many questions which are there in the gate and definitely this uh, class will help you to identify the languages ok. Some of the important DCFLs and CFLs I am going to write here like you know uh, regulars here some DCFLs here which are very important you may remember it if you want it CFLs DCFLs but not regulars CFLs but they are not <coughs> DCFLs ok. Some of the important regulars which are very important like <coughs> w x w power r where w comma x belongs to where you may do the mistake that is why I am writing here a b plus which is absolutely regular no doubt about it. Other important languages which are a power prime whole star and similarly <coughs> like w1 ash w2 such that 
W1, comma W2 belongs to A, comma B whole star. Okay, many languages are there. Some of the important languages I'm writing here, but you know A plus B whole star. Such languages are many, starting with A, ending with A, starting containing A, B. So many are there. GCFLs which are not regulars, like very famous A power and B power and A power and B power two n or <coughs> W hash W power R. So there is over one symbol or two symbols, three symbols. All of them will work here. And A star or A comma B whole star for all of them. What else we have here in DCFLs? Many other. Uh, I'm not writing many things, but uh, you just remember it. A power n, B power n, C star, many such forms. CFLs which are not DCFLs, like A power m, B power n, C power k, such that you might have m equal n or m equal k. That's I've just shown, right? Another one, W W power r, very famous language. W belongs to A comma B whole star. Right, the very famous languages we have here, and there are other languages like um, complement uh, W W such that W belongs to A comma B whole star. This is not a, a CFL, but its complement is CFL. That's a very you know interesting point. Okay. Other important uh, points in regular DCFL CFLs, you have not CFLs also. Sometimes we write like you know not regulars you should be very careful these words not regulars means who can come some might be dcfl some might be cfl some might be right <coughs> when you say not regulars you may have not dcfls not cfls and so on and that should be very careful like you know a power n b power n is a not regular but it is dcfl okay so that's the first point and it's a what dcfl Whenever I say a power n or m, b power n, c power k such that m equal to n or even n equal to k. This is also not regular, no doubt. It is also not regular, but this is what CFL, which is not a DCFL, which is CFL, but not a DCFL. You know that it is not a DCFL. But still it is not regular, still it is not regular. One more a power n, b power n, cf, c power n, which is not CFL, but it is also not regular. See all are not regular only, but out, out of this every non-regular has you know a different place in the Chomsky hierarchy. This stays inside the DCFL, this stays outside the DCFL but inside CFL, this stays outside the CFL but which stays inside context sensitive language. It is actually comes under in future topic it is CSL. It is what? Context sensitive language. Fine. Likewise we have a various number of languages. Okay. And over one symbol you already know not regulars if anybody says like a power um, 2 power n it is not regular so definitely not CFL. It also comes under not CFL. So with this, uh, we have done many things here, like uh, PDA, few constructions, and some of the you know many of the constructions we did for only DPDA, and how to identify CFL, how to identify DCFL, and along with we have also seen some of the regular languages, right? Finite and infinite languages. With this, you are aware of what are languages CFLs, what are DCFLs and we can take this and you can go further to understand the closure properties of the languages DCFLs as well as CFLs. So that we are going to see in the next lecture. I hope uh, this one shot video will definitely help you to revise many concepts in one video. Of course, there should be a lot of practice on this. As you know, it's a crash course, right? I want we want you to help uh, from basics. We are not going for very advanced. We are not only teaching basics. So you have to cover all the important concepts in one video with basics. So in all my videos, I have never imagined that you know the things. I actually explain from the basics to understand what actually needed for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see in.
coming lecture. Bye-bye. See you. Take care.